Shalom, family. <clears throat> it's been, uh, um, I've been doing a lot of, um, you know, digging and, you know, looking at the, you know, the Apocrypha and, <clears throat> and certain books and certain, you know, chapters and certain chapters, um, and certain verses of, um, on the book of, um, and all those books of, um, the Apocrypha. And it's just amazing to see how, you know, so many books, you know, have been taken out of the Bible. Um, like the book of Enoch, uh, Maccabees, Judy, um, Second Esdras. You know, all these books have mind-blowing information in, you know, in these books, which has been taken away off of the Canon Bible for multiple reasons. Like I said previously, you know, those religious institutions always had, you know, specific agendas. Um... <clears throat> always not only to hide the truth and also to push forward their pagan doctrines, you know. Um, for example, uh, all those pagan holidays that, you know, we, most of us people, we, we celebrate Halloween, you know, Christmas, you know, you know, Easter, all those, you know, pagan holidays they did not originate from the Bible. It, you know, you know, scripture doesn't, talk to us about these um pagan holidays and most people today especially people who call themselves christians we're blindly you know we've been blindly celebrating these events these holidays without even knowing the origins of these holidays which is of course pagan and origins of course so people you have to understand that what you know the christian church has always taught us um, most of the things that you know those doctrines came from men for example the secret rapture doctrine um, you know all those pagan feast days you know that they gave to us you know and you know it's just crazy how blind we were you know but you know good thing is that many of our people are waking up to the truth of knowing that you know that you know, most of the things that religion has given us is something that goes directly against the word of God. And I want to talk about a particular book of the Apocrypha. Going back to the um, to the original subject, because I wanted to talk about a, sp a particular book that really caught my attention, and I and I re I previously um, read it, and this it's a prophecy about the awakening of Israel, the scattered sheep of Israel, but. Reading these couple of verses, you know, thinking about it, I noticed something. The book of Baruch, you know, and I haven't read the full book of Baruch. I only, I've only read uh, a couple of verses and, you know, there's a pers And when you read throughout scriptures, the Bible always talks about a, a certain gathering. The book, of, the book of Revelation talks about the gathering also. Book of Isaiah talks about a gathering, you know. Jeremiah talks about you know, all that, you know, about you know um, the restoration of Israel. Deuteronomy thirty, Jeremiah thirty, all these Bible verses talks about a an awakening, you know, of you know the lost sheep of Israel. And what the Christian Church has never really told us, you know, especially us as as Black people, we've never really knew. Um, you know, we've never really digged in. We never really made our own research. And today, you know, Scripture says that in the last days, knowledge will increase. And we are living in these days where knowledge is rapidly increasing, especially among our people, you know. Um, it's just amazing how we are discovering so many things. That's why the Most High God always appoints a time. That's why, <clears throat> for all of us who believe in God and who are who follow, you know, Christ, the Mashiach, um, our goal is to follow God and follow His words, not follow religion. Of course, like I always say, it's important for us to come out of her, come out of Babylon, and to worship Him, to worship the Most High God, Elohim, to worship Him because He deserves it. You know. Um, when you look about, for example, you look um, about <clears throat> you, you when you go to the book of Deuteronomy and then you 
read about all these curses, the curses that will be upon the children of Israel forever until, you know, the return of the Mashiach, Christ. It's just amazing how people don't read scriptures. And, and the people who go there always love to add their own agenda. They just love to take Bible verses and different... Uh, they, they take scriptures and they twist it in their own understanding. For people who truly study uh, the Bible, people who really read the Word of God will automatically know that in these last days we're living, um, people who truly have spiritual discernment and have an understanding of the Word of God are able to discern through the Holy Spirit or the Hua HaKadosh, how we say it in Hebrew, or in you know, many different languages, of course. Um, it says that uh, Luke twenty one twenty four, where the Messiah Christ himself told the disciples that, you know, there would be a people who will call themselves Jews, but are, are not going to be, but they're going to be of the synagogue of Satan. Just off the bat, when you read that, you clearly know who Jesus was talking about. Of course, the Ashkenazi and, you know, the Khazars who called, you know, those Euro those Eastern Europeans today who currently live, who at least currently have the land of Israel as possession. Christ, the Messiah, clearly told us that they will, the Gentiles would have their, their time to rule until the fulfillment of prophecy, until, until the appointed time, you know, that the Most High will decide to. Once all these prophecies will be fulfilled, then <clears throat> many things will happen. Heavens and the earth will be shaking and the tribulations is really going to start kicking off. And, you know, uh, for those who, who believe in this fake secret, secret uh, rapture doctrine, many will be deceived. Because, simple, you look at throughout scriptures and you see how all the servants of the Messiah had to go through hardship. We had to go through pain and through, and through, and through um, tribulations before we were delivered. You know, the plagues that fell in Egypt, the children of Israel were not beamed away out of Egypt. They were protected from these plagues. The disciples and the apostles, they weren't beamed away secretly before they were they were persecuted. They had to go to go through those tribulations. So it's important for all my uh, all my Hebrew family out there, and all to all my brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, the Mashiach, to not get not be fooled by these doctrines. It's important not to be fooled. The other day, I shared a um, <clears throat> a couple of Bible verses that talks about not being deceived by all these false teachers and these false prophets. So, it's important for us to ask the Most High God for spiritual discernment, for the the Ruach, which is the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, Hakadesh, the Holy Spirit. It's important for us to know to to ask the Most High God for spiritual knowledge to help us to have spiritual discernment. Okay, it's very important. So. <clears throat> we, like I was saying, the book of Baruch, it's actually the book of Baruch. Yeah, wait, wait, yeah I think it's, yeah. All right, so this is a book that's, you know, that has a specific prophecy. And that prophecy ties to Deuteronomy 30. It also has ties with Jeremiah 30 also. It has ties with Isaiah um, 11, verse 11 through 12. And it's related. The only thing about the book of Baruch is that it's very direct. And this prophecy talks about a, a particular people in the last days. So let's start. I'm going to start reading it. And then I'll give my thoughts on on, on that. So <clears throat> this is the Most High God speaking, okay? chapter um, Verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me. Because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And shall know that I am Elohim their Yah. For I will give them a heart and a hear to hear, and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity, and think upon my name, and return from their stiff neck, and from their wicked deeds. For they shall remember the way of their fathers, which sent before Elohim. And I will bring them again in the land which I promised, with an oath. Unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Jacob. And they shall be rulers of it. And I will increase them, and they shall be, n they shall not be diminished. Just for, you know, just, let's just read the verse, um, verse 35 as well. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. 
and I will no more drive my people Israel out of the land that I have given them. So clearly that's a prophecy that also is the same um, prophecy that ties, as I say, to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1 to 7, that talks about the, the awakening and you know, um, the restoration of the lost sheep or the scattered sheep of Israel. When I say the scattered sheep of Israel, I'm not talking about the so-called Jews of today. I'm talking about the real descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that are still scattered to the four winds of the earth, currently as I speak. Um, so, right off the bat, the thing that caught your attention once you start reading these couple of verses, it's a prophecy that clearly talks about a certain people that will remember themselves in the last days. But ho hold on a second. From the European religious view, if you were to read this, these, these verses, you would, you would instantly ask yourself, hold on a second, something isn't right there. But we know that the Jewish people of today, the so-called descendants of the children of Israel, are those people. And we know that they have been, you know, they've, they have had, they, they returned to their land and ever since 1948. And, you know, they're still today serving God and keeping the, the laws and, you know. So who is this prophecy talking to then? If we know that, you know, the Jewish people of today know who they are, they know that they are Jews and they know... Their so-called, you know, Israelite uh, um, lineage. So it's amazing how people don't, don't go and make these research. They don't go to um, dig in. They don't do their due, due diligence to, you know, they don't take make any decisions whatsoever to go and make their own research. You know, people are so spiritually blinded. You know, it's just amazing to see how blinded we are. So. Reading these couple of verses, I instantly know why the Christian church took not only this book, but multiple other books from the Bible. It's because, you know, they had an agenda, you know, they had a mission is to push their false doctrines, using the Bible to push their false doctrines and their pagan holidays as well. Telling you that the laws are done with and that it doesn't matter. Once you, you, you come to Christ... I mean, this message is specifically for, for Hebrews, okay? The scattered sheep of Israel. We know that, you know, Gentiles can be grafted in the, through the body of the Mashiach, the Christ, the Yeshua, which is, you know, Jesus Christ. Um, and Gentiles can be grafted in, not into Israel, but into, you know, the people. They can be adopted, you know, through, you know, Christ. Because we know that when the Mashiach came, his, you know, he came to, you know, to the lost, for the lost sheep of Israel, but, you know, we also know that salvation also came to the Gentiles, the Greeks and the Romans and all the people. You know, we know that the apostles went, even if it, the mission of the apostles, uh, the apostle Paul as well. <clears throat> it's true that the apostle Paul preached the gospel to the Gentiles, but one of, one of his first missions was to go out to preach the, the good news of the Messiah to the scattered Israelites. Keep it in mind that back in, in the days where Christ was on earth, where the Mashiach was on earth, um, only the kingdom of Judah remained. Because one thing people got have to know is that the nine tribes of Israel were already scattered. And the Roman Empire, who was, you know, who was, you know, Judah, which, which was under the rulership of the Roman Empire in those days, <clears throat> only had the tribe of Judah, mainly the tribe of Judah, some Benjamites and some priests as well. But... Uh, most of the nine tribes of the kingdom of Israel were already scattered across Europe, across um, northeastern Africa, which is what people call today the Middle East, and also interior Africa, which is you know, Ethiopia, Egypt, Libya. Um, you know, so there there are many Israelites that were already scattered in the days where the Messiah came, and only mainly the tribe of, of Yehuda, Judah was still, you know, in the land at, at, in those days. So, the first mission of Christ was to, um, you know, accomplish, to fulfill prophecy, which many prophets for, uh, talk about the arrival, uh, you know, the, the, the arrival of a, of a Messiah. Isaiah prophesied about the Messiah. Uh, many prophets, even Jeremiah, I think. So, Jesus came, the Messiah came to accomplish prophecy. It was to not only offer salvation to his people at first because 
keeping in mind that the Israelites broke the covenant that they had with God and with the Most High God, and the kingdom of Israel was already scattered ever since the days of the Assyrian um, captivity, and only Judah remained in the land, which was, you know, the capital as Jerusalem. So the tribe of Judah remained, some Benjamites and some priests as well. But mainly, most of the tribes were already scattered and weren't in the land in those days. <clears throat> no, it's, it's just, it's just to, to tell you um, how things were in the land of Israel in those days. Because many strangers were already inhabiting the land. Many uh, Canaanites, many um, Greeks and Romans were already starting to move in, in the land in those days. But we know that the Ishmaelites, which are the modern-day Arabs, were still around in those days. It's just that the Ishmaelites didn't invade much of Africa in those days. They were, they were still there, but they didn't have any position of power like they do today in, in modern-day northern Africa and northeastern Africa, a.k.a. the so-called Middle East. So it's clear that it's a long history. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's a long history. Receive <laughs> just receiving a random message, anyways. So it's a it's a long history, um, and you know, I had to go back and 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 that to explain to you guys, um, you know, the state of Israel and and the state of the people of Israel at that time, the Israelites. You know that Israel was already scattered in those days. Judah was later on scattered uh, during the destruction of, of Jerusalem in seventeen eighty. When, you know, the Yehudians, which are the, you know, what we call the Jews or the Judeans, you know, f uh, fighting the Roman Empire couldn't, wouldn't stand a chance because of, of how mighty and powerful the Roman armies were in those days. Because Rome had the, the world's biggest army in the military in, the, in those days. So what happened? They fled. They left Jerusalem and millions of these Judeans fled in, into the mountains, which is Africa, you know. You know, interior Africa, Ethiopia, you know, Egypt, Libya, and eventually, you know, most of the of these Judeans ended up fleeing all the way to Central to West Africa. Because, keep in mind, back in those days, even Northern Africa was also under the rulership of the Roman Empire. So it's it's. Let me just uh, bring up a map real quick. Uh, sorry. So, just just to show you guys a map of the Roman Empire. Um, so, okay, so <clears throat> here is a is a, um, a a physical representation of the Roman Empire, which was a, a very big empire, vast territories, all of northern Africa and northeastern Africa, which is the Middle East, and even much of Europe, all the way up to England. So you can clearly see how big the Roman Empire was in those days, how massive it was. So, and we know that Israel, you know, as well, was under the rulership of, of, of um, Judah was also under the rulership of, um, of the Roman Empire in those days. So one of the reasons why the Israelites, we know that uh, throughout history, some Israelites or many of them also fled to Europe. Uh, also, during the Spanish Inquisition, many Jews of of the tribe of Judah lived in Portugal and Spain. So much, much, much of these Judeans or these Jews were also kicked out of Spain and Portugal, and most of them ended up in West Africa as well. Because keep it in mind, it was a couple of centuries before the transatlantic slave trade, and we know that in those days, ever since the destruction, ever since the destruction of Judah by the Roman Empire. The Ishmaelites, uh, you know, uh, were already enslaving many Israelites during the Trans-Arabian slave trade, which is something most people don't talk about. 800 years prior to the Elan slave trade, uh, the, the Arab slave trade was already, you know, happening way before um, the trans slave trade. So... It's just crazy how, see, most people don't talk about, it, but the Arab slave trade was actually, um, took place many, uh, a couple of, uh, about seven to eight hundred years before the transatlantic slave trade. So the people of Judah were already being enslaved prior, uh, a couple hundred years before, you know, 
the Atlantic Slave Trade, which was in fulfillment of Deuteronomy 28, 28, 68. So we have such a long history of captivities, not only because we turned away from, from the laws, but we were always a stiff-necked people. Like in the book of Baruch, talks about, you know, like I said earlier, talks about the fact that we are and we were always a stiff-necked people, getting away from laws and commitments. When we got out of the land of Egypt, we still found a way to complain. And that's sadly part of our history. You know, as a people, we've always been stiff-necked. And, and these last days, and this spiritual awakening that's happening right now, you know, a lot of our people are going to come back to the Most High, yeah. They're going to come back to the truth and truly serve Him. So, you know, that's why Isaiah 11 talks about the remnant that will be saved. Not only uh, there, the remnant of the Gentiles as well will also be saved because many Gentiles will, through the Ruach HaKadosh, which is the Holy Spirit, they will receive uh, this, this message from the Holy Spirit. And what's going to happen? They're going to see and believe in the truth that the Most High yeah, will show the, the Gentiles. You know, so the gathering of the twelve tribes of Israel, you know, will will occur, and also the gathering of the Gentiles will occur as well. I firmly believe that many Gentiles will be saved, the same as many Gentiles will not be saved as well. Same goes for the Israelites that will be awakened, and you know, the Israelites that will still be sleeping and will still live in sin, will not be exempt from judgment. So. It's clear that the book of Baruch is a very interesting book. So remembering themselves is very important. Because in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. That prophecy has absolutely nothing to do with the so-called Jewish people of today. This prophecy clearly talks about a certain people. The same group of people who went through the curses of Deuteronomy and to this day are still going through, the, through the, those curses. I had a conversation with one of my, one of my um, friends the other day. Does coming to Christ and coming to the truth will get you off of these curses? On a spiritual level, yes. Because through the grace of the Mashiach, the Christ... Once you come to accept, you know, Yeshua as your personal Lord, Elohim and Savior, then what happens? You receive salvation. So spiritually, you are freed from slavery and bondage. But it doesn't mean that you will not be, you will not be in, in Egypt. Because I tell you what, we are still living in Egypt. We are still in the land of our captivities, where we were, where we were sent during during slavery by ships. We are still living in the land where, we, where our ancestors were uh, came by ships. We are still living in America. We're still living in the Caribbeans, South America, even some in Europe and the UK, even all the way, some all the way down to Asia, India, wherever, in every nation where we were scattered. Like prophecy says, we would remember ourselves, like in the book of Baruch says. It's important for all my Hebrew family out there to know to you know, I pray that you know the Most High that He truly touches your heart, and all you Gentiles who serve the Most High God in spirit and in truth. I'm asking also you Gentiles to serve God with all your heart, and sharing these messages, it it's not according to the flesh, but it's according to the Spirit and the Most High, the Ruach, Hakadosh, the Holy Spirit. Not about. <clears throat> I'm not pushing any agendas. I, I am not pushing a, do, a doctrine nor an agenda. I'm only here to speak my mind about the things that I've understood uh, in these Apocrypha, which are the books that have been intentionally took off away of, um, of the Bible for a specific reason, for multiple reasons, for their doctrines and all the things that these Gentiles wanted to put you know, in front of the world. So... <clears throat> I've um, realized many things, and like I was saying, getting back to what I said earlier, coming to the truth shouldn't be, you know, used as an excuse to create a religion, because who you are in the flesh is not a religion, it's a truth, and it's something that's, you know, supposed to happen, it's part of Bible prophecy, and even these books that have been taken off the Bible was for a specific reason, to hide that truth. Because the masses don't really, especially in, in this 
age we're living in, the masses don't read, especially our people, especially black people. We don't, most of us don't take our times to read and to go into books and, you know, even in this technological era where where you can just grab a phone and tap a few things on Google and there you are. You can receive many, multiple knowledges through a phone on the internet and these days. And knowledge is rapidly increasing these last days. And it's Bible prophecy fulfilling, you know. I'm encouraging everybody. Either it's my brothers and sisters in Christ or my Hebrew family out there. Scattered through four winds. Serve the Most High God. And do not be afraid because the Most High said that He has never forsaken us. Either it's our brothers and sisters in Christ who came to the gospel or our, our, our people, the Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob. It's important for us to come to that truth and to use that truth as a spiritual motivation. Because this, 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 that's the goal. The reason why the Most High is showing you the truth of who you are, it's no game. It's part of Bible prophecy. And knowing who you are in the flesh will not automatically offer you salvation. It's only a wake-up call through the Ruach, through the Holy Spirit. For you to come back to the Lord your God, to the Elohim your Yahweh, to come back to Him. It's just a message of encouragement. And the book of Baruch is something that I really, I'm going really to encourage uh, you guys to go read and understand that prophecy. Uh, <clears throat> and it, like I said before, it ties with the prophecy of Deuteronomy 30. As a matter of fact, let me just read it real quick. Uh, it, it ties directly to many other prophecies about the awakening of Israel in the last days. Deuteronomy 30, chapter um, 1 to 7. So let me read it so that we can finish. And it shall come to pass when all these things are called, are, um, are, are, Things are come upon thee, the blessings and the curses which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to to mind among all the nations where the, the Elohim your Yah hath driven thee, and shall return unto Elohim thy Yahweh, and shall obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day. Thou had thy children then um, thou and thou thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Then, Elohim thy Yahweh will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations where Elohim thy God yeah, hath scattered thee. If any of thine be driven out into the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will Elohim thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And Elohim thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he, sh and he will do thee good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. And Elohim thy Yahweh will circumcise thine heart, and the souls, the heart of thy seed, to love Elohim thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, that thou mightst live. Verse 7. And Elohim thy Yah will put all these curses upon thine enemies, and on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee. So it is clear that, like the book of Baruch, that same prophecy ties to it. And I can go on and on and, you know, read the book of Jeremiah and all that. But, you know, I'm always going to stay, you know, in, in this subject, in these subjects. So, it's important, you know, for us to understand scriptures. Reading the Bible without understanding is not going to, you know, help you, you know, receive <clears throat> the knowledge that the Most High God wants us to receive. It's important for us to always pray before reading scriptures. It's important to always pray. And ask the Most High God for spiritual knowledge, spiritual wisdom and understanding. You know, the Word of God said that with lack of knowledge, 
my people perish, you know. And it, it not only applies to us Hebrews, but also to all our, our brothers and sisters in, in Yeshua and Christ. You know, it's important for us to read scriptures and accept the word. So, I had to check something. So, like I was saying, um, <clears throat> it's important for us to, you know, always ask the Most High God for understanding, spiritual understanding, and spiritual wisdom. So, the book of Baruch is, is a very interesting book. And not only Baruch, but multiple other books of the Apocrypha. It gives us so much knowledge that has been, you know, taken off of the, of the canon Bible we read today. It's amazing how things have been tempered with and changed throughout the centuries by the heathens. It's just amazing. But coming to the truth and knowing who you are, to my Hebrew family out there, like I said, it's not so, something that supposed, you, you're supposed to, to deal with pride. Like, I notice uh, how these the Hebrew Israelites out there seem to be taking this truth as a pride. Well, we know that as a, as a as a people, we have a we have a very long history of slavery and captivity because we've always been a stiff necked people. And knowing who you are in the flesh is not supposed to become a pride. You know, when I found out about the truth, I, you know, at first I felt kind of happy to know the truth, but I, I also felt some sort of sadness for my people because how much our people suffered throughout the centuries because we always turned away from the laws of yeah it always you know give me a, it always made me a little sad but you know the holy spirit always told me to keep on serving and he will use those who serve him especially our people who decide to come to the truth so i'm going to encourage everybody my brothers and sisters and and christ and also my hebrew family out there who serve the most high god and and, and respects the feast days and honor you know, the laws of Christ, the Ten Commandments and the Feast. It's always important for us to serve the Most High God with all our heart and all our soul. Because times will get hard and tribulation will start to intensify. So, with that, I'll say shalom and, and stay faithful to the Most High God. To my Hebrew family out there. To the scattered sheep of Israel and Judah. And to all my brothers and sisters in Christ, Yeshua. May the Most High bless you. Shalom.